Now that your flooring is installed, it's time to finish the project by installing trim, moldings, and transitions. Putting trim around your new wood floor is an important and often overlooked step in the installation process. To successfully install trim, always leave the proper expansion gaps, including the space under the transition moldings. Be sure and match the color of the boards on either side of your transition with the molding and select from a variety of boxes to get the best color blend. This ensures a smooth sight line without color interruptions. There are several different types of transition and base moldings to choose from. Transition or T moldings are used to transition between two floors of the same or very close heights. A floor may be shimmed below the molding to adjust for slight offsets. Available in overlapping and flush mount varieties, reducers are used to transition between floors of two different heights. They provide a more gradual decline in depth and can be shimmed if needed. Baby thresholds or end caps are used when you have flooring that meets a vertical obstacle and you must cover an expansion gap, such as a French door, sliding door, or fireplace. These moldings end abruptly at a 90 degree angle and are not much taller than the flooring, making it easy to maintain the functional use of a door or reduce the risk of becoming a trip hazard. Stair nosing is designed to be used when a horizontal surface overhangs a vertical surface. It is commonly used in traditional stair tread installation, either on the top step or on a landing area to ease the transition. It can be a decorative element and comes in both overlapping and flush mount options. When it comes to installing transition moldings, there are two different methods to choose from. When installing over concrete, it is always a good idea to rough up the concrete in the area the adhesive will be applied to ensure a good bond to the surface. The click strip method features a metal strip that is screwed down to the wood substrate. The transition molding then clicks into the metal strip. Traditional transition molding installation uses construction adhesive only to secure the moldings in place. Whichever installation method you use, it is recommended to sand the back of the molding and use construction adhesive to ensure a strong bond. When cutting transition strips, you want to be sure and measure several times so as not to cut the molding too short. Cut within 1 32nd inch of the adjoining surface on both ends of the molding using an 80 tooth or higher saw blade on a miter or table saw for the smoothest cuts. Caulking the ends provides a smoother transition to the wall or door jam joints. For base moldings, Choose an option that will cover any gaps, or consider stacking moldings to add depth and character while covering wider expansion gaps. Baseboards are used to provide a finished and dimensional edge for the bottom of your vertical walls, and come in hundreds of profiles, sizes, and designs to complement any decor. Quarter rounds attach to the baseboard and provide a design element that covers the expansion gap. Shoe molding is the same as a quarter round, except for the profile design. The short side is placed on the flooring and the long side travels up the vertical surface. When installing base moldings, exact measurements are critical to ensure a tight fit between each piece. Some of the tools needed include a miter saw with an 80 tooth blade to ensure fine cut edges, a bevel square to assist with cutting angles, a finishing nailer to secure the molding to the wall, caulk for nail holes and along the top edges, and paint. When installing baseboards and quarter rounds, remember to account for expansion gaps around the perimeter of the room and always secure moldings to the wall, never to the floor. It's also a good idea to keep a few boxes of excess materials for any future repairs. For a variety of floor installation and maintenance materials, visit your local Floor & Decor and at floorandecor.com.